Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com. Today I'd like to give you a little tour of our garden. So we have our raised beds along the side of our yard here. They stretch all along this side and I'm just gonna show you what we have growing in each of them. Here in Colorado, the growing season is on the shorter side. So we get a late start planting and then we oftentimes have a frost fairly early in the fall. So we try to, you know, do the best that we can. It's not the most ideal place for growing things, but you can do pretty well. So we actually built these raised beds just with some regular lumber, some two by sixes. We didn't use cedar or treated or anything. We didn't want the chemicals in treated lumber. And we decided in our climate, which tends to be, you know, on the dry side, that we would just use the regular lumber as long as it would last. And then maybe see about replacing them sometime down the road. But for right now, these have been working really well. We filled them with some screened topsoil and then mixed in some compost that we have from raising our chickens. We always have the brooder wood chips left over whenever we have chicks in the brooder and then also some stuff after processing chickens. We let that compost all winter and then mix that in in the spring before we plant and that seems to do pretty well. I guess we're kind of starting off with the most disappointing bed here. This one is where I like to grow some herbs and I started some different herbs from seed and so far some things haven't really come up and I haven't found all the seeds that I want for all the herbs so that's a work in progress. The seeds that I used I think were too old. They were from years ago so not a big surprise but we'll come back to that. Hopefully I'll be able to get some better seeds or start them inside and do a little better with my herb garden. Next we have beets. I love growing pretty much anything that I want to ferment. And the reason is when you ferment, you wanna have the highest quality vegetables that you can, definitely organic, but even beyond organic, you wanna have them to be the healthiest that they can be to give you the highest quality fermented foods. And also to do large amounts of fermented foods, you have to buy kind of a lot of vegetables. And so you can save a lot of money and get the highest quality by growing them yourself. So I have beets here that I plan on fermenting. I'll probably have some upcoming videos on, on how I make different lacto-fermented beets. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Next, we have this bed here. I was originally going to do cabbages, but I was not able to find any cabbage starts and I didn't start any inside. So instead, we filled this bed with pumpkin plants. And it looks like some of them are up. We may have to try and replant maybe one more. Sorry, these chickens are loud. They're very friendly. Um, and then in this next bed, we have some melons over here. We planted some little melon plants from, from seed. They're still pretty small. We have a couple watermelon plants over there that we bought as starts, and then some pepper plants. They're um, three different colors of bell peppers. We have green, yellow, and red bell peppers. And then in this bed, we have tomatoes. I tried to get the biggest variety of tomato plants that I could, so we have little tiny cherry tomatoes, some yellow pear shaped tomatoes, big beefsteak ones, some more medium sized varieties. So we have six different tomato plants there. And then in the same bed, I also have cucumbers. So these are gonna be for pickling cucumbers. In this bed here, we have our summer squash. There's yellow squash and zucchini. They seem to be growing really well. And then over in this bed, we originally planted acorn squash, but I think that the seeds that we used were too old and they didn't come up. So we replanted this bed with pumpkins. Pumpkins were kind of like our fill-in thing. If something didn't work or we couldn't find the seeds for them, then we were just like, do pumpkins. We love pumpkins for the GAPS diet because they're a really good way for getting carbs and they're allowed all the way up on to the beginning of stage one. They don't have the sweetness that butternut squash has that can be a problem on intro. So we are really looking forward to having lots of pumpkins. In this bed, we have butternut squash and we'll be able to enjoy that for the people who are on the full GAPS diet. And then over here is where we were originally doing pumpkins. So there's our first planting of, of pumpkins over there. 
and I went with a variety that was like a, a good one for baking um, that they said was good for making pies and things like that. So that is our complete garden tour. I hope that you enjoyed seeing that. Be sure and leave me a comment below and let me know what you are growing this year and how it's going. Check out the description box for links to my other videos and freebies. I have ebooks and checklists, printables, different things like that down there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think would like to see it. Here on my channel, I show you how to make nourishing recipes for nutrient-dense food, natural remedies, and DIY skincare and home products. So if those are something that you're interested in and you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two videos every week. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.